Hi, I'm Linda Mal, and welcome to Art This Week. On this week's episode, we visit the Museum of Fine Arts Houston and speak with Dr. Sabina Hogg about the exhibition Habsburg Splendor, Masterpieces from Vienna's Imperial Collections. Now for Art This Week. Hi, I'm here with Dr. Savina Hogg at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston to talk about their latest exhibition, Habsburg Splendor. Thank you very much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Okay, so can you tell us a little about the exhibition and about the Habsburg dynasty? The exhibition shows about 600 years of passionate Habsburg collecting when it started out in the Middle Ages up until the end of the dynasty at the end uh, or beginning of the early 20th century uh, after the World War I when the dynasty had to step down. It is the first time that we bring uh, treasures from the Kunsthistorisches Museum uh, to the US with such a wide range, not only comprising paintings one would usually expect from an art exhibition, but showing wonderful treasures and icons from all of the 13 collections uh, of the Kunsthistorisches Museum. We wanted to cover uh, the, the medieval times and here uh, we start out with uh, Maximilian I, then we continue to the Renaissance period, to the Baroque times, and as I said before, and then we'll end up with the end of the dynasty as a ruling dynasty. We brought about 100 pieces from the 13 collections of the Kunsthistorisches Museum and we're particularly proud to be here in the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston because uh, here we can really, we have this spacious room to show the, the jousting, the tournaments, the carriages and all those mom moments in time which were not only historical moments in time but also very important moments for creating uh, objects of the highest artistic quality. Well, we're very happy to have you here. Thank you. So we're standing in front of a relief of Maximilian I. Can you tell us the importance of Maximilian I as emperor and about the work itself? Yes. Maximilian I uh, often referred to himself as the last knight. He was um, uh, the descendant of, of the famous uh, Habsburg dynasty and he was the one who married Princess uh, Mary from Burgundy, thus uniting those two um, empires, especially Burgundy was at the time one of the richest and, and also uh, speaking in terms of art and art history, one of the most um, uh, important areas in Europe. And through their marriage, this was really the, the beginning of the, the, uh, of the, of the rise of the, of the Habsburg dynasty all over Europe. Um, Maximilian also started to be, uh, become um, the sovereign of the Order of the Golden Fleece. And he was the one who had his portrait uh, done over and over in many, many uh, materials. Albrecht Dürer was his most uh, important court artist who portrayed uh, his very particular portrait, also the painting in, in, in our museum, in the Kunsthistorisches Museum. And uh, all, all his portraits refer to the one that Dürer portrayed by him. And we see him here in a smaller, in a mobile work of art of, of made of stone carved of stone uh, by uh, Hans Daucher from um, uh, Augsburg and you see um, uh, Maximilian the first horseback riding which is a very imperial gesture in general St. George who was also um, uh, defeating the evil defeating the bad and uh, and and thus in this uh, uh, preciously carved relief uh, Maximilian the first combines the political mission but also uh, the mythological and the religious mission uh, that was conceived uh, within one person. So we're standing in front of this marvelous piece. It's the centerpiece for survey. Can you tell us more about this? It's really a weird piece and, mm -hmm. and I haven't seen anything else uh, like this in, in, in any other museum and it's very popular with the visitors. It's a centerpiece for the festive table and uh, it's made from shells. Of course it's, it's gold uh, in the basic and everything but, but uh, the, the white kind of whitish material you see is made from the shell and even the shells are carved uh, from the outside uh, with various motifs, with ornaments um, and um, those individual vessels were made to hold sorbet, ice cream, 
in, in, an, in a vegetable form, so colored ice cream, so people could, uh, the court people could just take them out and, and, and enjoy a piece of ice cream. But on the other hand, of course, it's pure movement, it's, it's, it's uh, late Baroque, it's already Rococo, one could say. Um, and, 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 and it's also a family tree. It was uh, commissioned uh, by, by uh, Emperor Charles VI or fourth Emperor Charles VI and his wife the father of Maria Theresia. And so you see uh, all their faces carved uh, here in the shells, like, like if they were cameos. So it's a very precious uh, centerpiece, also made for looking at it very closely, for astonishing, for making your eyes wonder. And, 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 and it's, it's also um, a monument for, for sheer joy of life. One could say, can you imagine having this sit on, this, on, on, on the table as a centerpiece and you pick uh, the little pieces of, of, of ice cream and then you start looking at the other ornaments. Some of them ca cannot really be um, identified, but it's a very uh, pre uh, precious um, a piece of, 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 of goldsmith's work, um, also bringing in the exotic material of the shells, which was quite the topic um, in, in the Baroque time. Um, do we know who made this? No, we do not know who, who, who made this. It's an it's an Austrian it's an Austrian uh, piece, um, and but we can track it down um, in the in the inventories um, of of the, the collection of uh, Maria Theresia, and so this is why we can why we can uh, also um, uh, connotate it with her possession or with her with her works of art that she collected. Uh, at uh, uh, the castle of Schönbrunn, which you see here in, in, in the back of this uh, painting by Bilotto. We are standing in front of this marvelous, gorgeous Caravaggio painting. Can you tell us about the scene that's being portrayed? Yes, it's a scene from scripts, the crowning uh, with uh, the thorns. It's, it's um, uh, described and defined with utmost brutality when Christ is already suffering and, and he is uh, despised as, as, as uh, depicting himself as king. And so he's, he's been put on the crown of thorns with utmost brutality. And uh, he's still, of course, he's still alive, he's suffering. Uh, the light that Car Caravaggio really lets shine onto this, uh, on the scene is also very brutal, very direct, very harsh. And it focuses on the face um, of Christ and also uh, of, of, of one of the persons that, that is really doing him such, such harm. And it, it depicts, uh, it gives a very good view of the bodies, of the suffering and also of the, the, the sheer um, uh, brutality of the man who is, who is, uh, who is really uh, hurting Christ uh, so much. Also, uh, since the view is li like this, we as, as the viewers of the painting, we are so close to it, it seems as if we were almost part of the scene. And this, of course, is something that Caravaggio intended. He was uh, painting in an age which was called Counter-Reformation, where the Catholic faith had to be reinstalled in a, in a very ardent, in a very firm uh, way. And um, all the depictions um, had to be very simple to make the viewer uh, become part of the scene that was, that was happening on the painting. It is from, uh, from a famous collection in Rome, the Giustiniani collection, where we find it in the inventory. And just recently this document um, turned up. And uh, so we can uh, identify this painting is one of the paintings of the Giustiniani collection in Rome. And uh, from this very uh, collection, it was directly bought from the Habsburgs, brought to Vienna and is in our museums ever since. So we're standing in front of child portrait of Infanta Maria Teresa. Can you tell us a little about her? And I understand that child portraits were very big during this period. Can you tell us a little about that too? Yes, this is the Infant Maria uh, Teresa. She was daughter of the Spanish King Philip IV. Mm -hmm. 
and um, she was one of the many children he had from uh, his first marriage and uh, she was depicted as a young princess, Infanta meaning princess, wearing the court costume and of course look at her also the, the, the very strange hairdo which of course was also the fashion of the time. The reason why we have so many portraits of, of um, uh, the children, especially the Infantas um, of uh, Philip IV is of course at that time photography didn't exist. And uh, since the Habsburgs tended to marry uh, with uh, princes and heirs to the throne in France, in Austria and so on, they had to send pictures uh, just to, to, to give a picture of, of the young bride. And uh, uh, so Philip IV had uh, Velázquez, Diego Velázquez, mm -hmm. as his court painter uh, to paint regularly the portraits of the Infantas and then the portraits were sent to uh, the, the, the King of France. She was uh, married. Um, uh, at first promised and then uh, married uh, the king uh, of France, uh, Louis uh, uh, the, uh, the 16th. And uh, uh, her half-sister was the famous Infanta Marga Margarita Teresa, the one who married, later on married uh, Emperor Leopold I, who was her uncle, and then she came to Vienna. And this is why in the Kunsthistorisches Museum we have uh, many paintings by Velázquez of, um, of the Spanish uh, princesses. And, um, and, and they still uh, uh, were, were used as, as documents, uh, as presents, as gifts, uh, but also uh, showing the, the, the family tree uh, of, the, of the, the, the respective families in um, uh, in Madrid, we have many portraits of Philip IV, of Maria Theresia, of Margarita Theresa, and, and all the members of the royal family. We want to thank Dr. Hogg for speaking with us. For more information on the exhibition, go to mfah.org. That's it for Art This Week. Thanks for watching. I still got your pony